Hello folks, again here, Evangelist Matthew Bullen from Houston, Texas, United States, half the year and half the year in Rupa, Uganda, with my friend Angoli George Kuzmas, interpreting into Nakara Majong. Yes. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to talk about the secret of Paul's purpose. The Apostle Paul was before a, a, a man throwing Christians into prison. His name was Saul. He was very trained in all of Judaism. He sat under Gamaliel, the great teacher. He was the best of the best in Judaism. And then he was going to Damascus to hunt down Christians and put them in prison. And Jesus appeared to him from the sky in a bright light. And Paul fell from his horse. He was blinded. And he said, Who are you, Lord? And Jesus said, It is me, Jesus. The one you are persecuting. And eventually, Paul went to Damascus. He got his eyes back. And God sent him to preach all over the world. And he wrote many letters that eventually became included into the Word of God. And one of those letters, he wrote to his disciple, Timothy. His son in the faith. And he says in 1 Timothy 1 5, he tells us here the secret of his purpose. The purpose of his writings. The purpose of this letter. He says, the purpose of my instruction is that all believers would be filled with love. That comes from a pure heart. A clear conscience. And genuine faith. Paul said all that I have written. All my preaching. All my instruction. Is for this purpose. That all believers would be filled with love. And this love. Would come from a pure heart. A clear conscience. And genuine faith. Sadly he says. Says in the next verse. But some people have missed the whole point. They have turned away from these things. So let's look at Paul's secret purpose for all his writings. Number one. A pure heart. 
Love that comes from a pure heart. The Bible has much to say about that. Proverbs 4.23 Guard your heart above all else. For it determines the course of your life. Of course here he's not talking about the muscle that pumps your blood. It's talking about who you really are inside. Your affections. Your emotions. Your thoughts. Your dreams. Your attitudes. Those are your heart. Matthew, uh, Jesus said in Matthew 12, A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. Jesus said in Matthew 15, from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying, and rumors. Mark 7.21 Jesus said, out of a person's heart come evil thoughts sexual immorality theft murder adultery greed wickedness deceit Lustful desire, envy, rumors, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things, Jesus said, come from within. They are what defile you. Paul's purpose was to get all believers to have a good heart to be givers not takers I often tell the children of Mission Moroto there are two kinds of people in the world there are givers and there are takers there are those always saying give me, give me, give me and there are those who say here I will help you I will bless you I will give Henry Ward Beecher it is the heart that makes a man rich he is rich or poor according to what he is not according to what he has. Warren Wiersbe said this. The heart of every problem is a problem in the heart. And John Piper said, Sin is what you do when your heart is not satisfied with God. Charles Spurgeon said it like this. 
You must keep all earthly treasures out of your heart. And let Christ be your treasure. And let Him have your heart. Madam Gayon. Madam Gayon. She once said. He who has a pure heart will never cease to pray. And he who is constant in prayer knows what it is to have a pure heart. Psalm 51.10 David said Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Psalm 15 who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord? Who may enter your presence on your holy hill? Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right, speaking the truth from sincere hearts, those who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. Those who despise flagrant sinners and honor the, fall, the faithful followers of the Lord and keep their promises even when it hurts. Those who lend money without charging interest and who cannot be bribed to lie about the innocent. Such people will stand firm forever. So God, so Paul's purpose was to have every believer with a pure heart. And also a clear conscience. Romans 2.15 he said. They demonstrate that God's law is written in their heart. For their own conscience and thoughts accuse them or tell them they are doing right. And this is the message I proclaim that the day is coming when God through Christ Jesus will judge everyone's secret life. Because of this, I always try to maintain a clear conscience before God and all people. I, I agree with Paul. A man's greatest treasure is a clear conscience before God. No matter what, no matter what you must suffer, no matter how you must lose, if you keep your conscience clear before God, it is a heavenly thing. You must work on a pure heart. You must keep a clear conscience. When you sin, 
I need the chiyo. Go to God. Confess. Clear your conscience. When you sin against your brother or sister, go to them. Apologize. Clear your conscience. Clear your conscience. Matthew 5 8. Jesus said, God blesses those whose hearts are pure. I Proverbs 1120. The Lord detests people with crooked hearts. But he delights in those with integrity. Deuteronomy 529. Oh, that they would always have hearts like this. That they might fear me. And obey all my commands. If they did, they and their descendants would prosper forever. God wants you to have a pure heart. A good heart. And a clear conscience. I love the way A.W. Tozer puts it. There are rare Christians whose very presence excites others to be better Christians. And then he says, yeah, I, I want to be that rare Christian. That was Paul's secret purpose. He said, the purpose of my instruction is that all believers would be filled with love. That comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and genuine faith. Number three, genuine faith. 2 Corinthians 6 6. We prove ourselves by our purity. Our understanding. Our patience. Our kindness. By the Holy Spirit within us. And by our sincere love. Romans 12, 9. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Francis Chan once said, Something is wrong with us when our lives make sense to non believers. If the unchristian world looks at us, and they say, yes, yes, that's the way you should be. There's something wrong with that. We should be different. Because they hated Jesus. Do they also hate us? I think of the old evangelist Billy Sunday. He said this. 
There will be so many Christians in hell. It be. Their feet will be sticking out the windows. What he meant was, there will be many in hell who called themselves Christians, but they didn't have genuine faith. They weren't filled with love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and genuine faith. And Timothy is the one Paul is writing to. And he says this in chapter 4, verse 12. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, in your faith, and your purity. God's plan for us. Paul's secret purpose for all of his writings is that all believers would be filled with love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and genuine faith. Oh, brothers and sisters in Christ, let's fulfill Paul's purpose. Let's study his instructions. And let's be those believers he was trying so hard to create. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Stay tuned. More secrets of the kingdom are on their way. Amen. Amen.